G'day folks. Today, we're gonna try out some tools that I've never tried before. I've managed to get my hands on some of the Arbortech range. If you don't know what Arbortech is, I highly suggest you go and check them out. I'll put a link down below of places that you can check them out. But today, I've got my hands on the power chisel, the mini carver, and a turbo plane disc. And I'm really keen to see what these things can do. I've also never worked with camphor laurel before, and I've got a slab of that I picked up about a month or two ago, I think. It's been sitting to the side, begging to get used every day. So today I'm gonna make a charcuterie board with it. Now the camphor laurel has got some serious cracks in it. It's also got a bit of warping in it. So I'm gonna try and use the turbo plane to level it out. And then I'm debating on whether we use resin or I do my very first bow tie inlay to fill those cracks up. Problem is I don't have a bandsaw so I can't cut the bow ties on the bandsaw. So I have to do that by hand if we go down that route. Guess I'll see how I'm feeling when I get to that stage. Let's crank out this Arbitex stuff and take a look at it. So the kit came in this wicked bag. There's a few bits and pieces left in there. I've got the power chisel there, some extra chisel tips. We've got the mini carver. We've got the big carving disc. I don't know if these are the technical names for these tools and the turbo plane. I'm pretty excited to try these out. So that's the turbo plane disc there, if you haven't seen one before. So unlike similar products that you attach to your grinder, they generally just produce dust and just grind away at whatever material you're working with. The Arbitec turbo plane, as the name implies, actually planes the timber with these three blades here. So you get shavings rather than dust. This isn't a sponsored video. These weren't given to me by Arbitec, so I can be completely honest here. This thing's a bit crazy. It took way more of an aggressive cut than I was expecting. So it did gouge a little bit. I didn't get a fully flat surface from it. On the other hand, it did the job I wanted it to do. It got it roughly flat, and then I hit it with 40 grit on the belt sander to really level everything out. Now, I've always been warned about camphor laurel. Everyone says how awful it smells. So I was expecting something pretty damn bad. But to be completely honest, my shop smells a bit like tea tree now, which I don't mind at all. So I guess it's each to their own personal opinion, but in my view, I don't actually mind the smell of the camphor laurel. I'm gonna have to try and get some bowl blanks of this stuff to turn on the lathe, I reckon. All right, enough talking. Let's get back in and shape this charcuterie board.
So let's start again. guys you know what I'm about to say if you've watched any of my resin videos you know that together me and resin we spring leaks and that's what's happened down here luckily I used the mold from my coffee table build you can check that out up here shameless plug why not luckily I put that underneath it's melamine so it's caught the resin hopefully it'll be easy to get off and I don't have to worry about resin going all over the floor instead of trying to contend with wet runny sticky resin I've decided to let bygones be bygones in other words I'm leaving that stuff to set up hopefully that will fill all of the little cracks that it's leaking out of anyway and then I'm gonna come back and do another small pour over the top so I guess I'm just gonna go sit down and wait for a few hours. But while we're waiting, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that now. If you haven't checked out my website yet, make sure you do that after you subscribe. Also, I've got a list of tools and that that I use down below. I'm also gonna have links to the Arbortex stuff down there if you wanna check that out. Some are affiliate links, some aren't, but don't worry, it won't cost you any more money either way. But if you use an affiliate link, it'll really help my channel out. So thanks in advance. Let's wait for this resin to cure. Alright, so we've got a few little spots where the resin didn't quite take. There are a couple of air bubbles and just a few really small spots in the grain. I'm going to mix up some 5 in epoxy, throw the blue pigment in that and try and fill up these gaps quickly.
for me I need you to stay right there I'm coming right away, my dear I tried this, tried that, tried everything Coming right back, right back Won't you wait for me I need you to stay right there I'm coming right away, my dear How wicked is this thing? This is the biggest charcuterie board I have ever crafted. I wonder how long it is. 135 centimeters. That's about 53 inches. For all you folks who aren't up to speed with metric measurements. This thing is huge, man. I am absolutely thrilled with how this came out. I sanded it up to 600 grit, then I applied some sanding sealer, then I hit it with 800 grit, and it is just so smooth. It is insane. Got my very first bow tie inlays in there as well. I cut those out of Mary. I was thinking of going with a Jarrah to be a real contrasting timber, but I ended up deciding that we'd go with the lighter, subtle look because I really wanted the resin to be the main feature of this. Speaking of the resin, look at that blue. It is all through. We've got little bug holes in here. There's even tiny little grain splits that I managed to get some into. The handle on this thing feels great as well. It's a good size to really hold on to. This thing is insane. And it doesn't happen very often with my creations, but the bottom of this is wicked too. You almost don't want to hide the bottom. Look at that. I kept the bow tie inlay just on the top so I didn't put any underneath. So on the bottom, you've just got the resin feature. And again, that resin is all the way through. There's even a little bit in the handle. So guys, I am absolutely thrilled with how this one came out. Compared to my last charcuterie board, this one up here, I think this is a massive improvement. Now I'm attending the Yanship Markets in WA at the end of this month, and I'll be keeping this to take with me. If it doesn't sell at the markets, it'll be listed on my website afterwards. So if you're keen on it, and you're you're lucky enough that no one picks it up at the markets, then you might just be able to score this bad boy. Given its size though, I kind of hope that you're local if you buy it, because this will cost an arm and a leg in postage. The sheer size of this is just awesome. I really love the grain that came out in the camphor laurel as well. Look at the different shades and colors in there. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one because I had an absolute blast doing this. Certainly one of my all-time favorite pieces, this one. Make sure you check out the links below. As I said, I used the Arbitec gear for the first time in this one. I was gonna try out the chisel and the mini carver, but I think this video is already pretty long as it is. So we might save that for another project. But there'll be links down below on where you can check it out. There's links down there for all my socials as well and my website. So make sure if you haven't checked out the website or my social platforms, head on over there. Subscribe to my mailing list, give us a follow on the socials, and keep up to date with everything I'm doing. We've had a lot of new subscribers recently. Join us here on the channel, so a big shout out to all you guys. Thank you for joining, and if you like it, make sure you tell your friends about it so they can come and join the fun too. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, I'll catch you later.